Taketh away the sins of the world. My God, my God, we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we say so this morning. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Because of the cross, we have access into your presence. We can enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, we bless you this morning. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You were delivered for our offenses. Yes, Lord. You were raised again for our justification. Yes. Hallelujah. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace. We are peace with our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have taken away the enmity. Ah, we bless you this morning. We are no longer strangers and foreigners and aliens. We are sons and daughters of the living God. We are joint heirs with Jesus this morning. My God, we bless you, Lord, we bless you. So we have come to praise you. We have come to love you. We have come to present ourselves to you as living, living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you which is our reason of our service. So, Lord, we bless you this morning. Hallelujah. We welcome your presence. 
we welcome the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you said in your word, we're to a tree are guarded in your name, that you are there in the midst of God. Ah, we give you praise. So, Lord, we welcome you. Hallelujah. Bless every life in your house today. Every man, every woman, our young adults, our teenagers, our children. My God, we cover them with our prayers and with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those who are tuned in on the radio on WAC 90.1. Ah, my God, those who are tuned in online, wherever they are. Hallelujah. In the world, in the Caribbean, Lord, we pray that the same power that raised Christ from the dead will quicken their bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we bless you, Lord. We bless you for this wonderful Lord's Day morning. This first Lord's Day of the 12th month of the year. We thank you that we are alive and in the land of the living. Ah, we thank you for breath in our lungs this morning. We didn't wake up ourselves, Father. You woke us up. And it's so good to be alive. Ah, we give you praise, Lord. My God, my God, my God. Lord, we thank you that we don't need any stone to praise you this morning. We don't need any rock to cry out this morning. We are a grateful people. Our hearts are full of gratitude. That is why we have come, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, to do what you will this morning. Do what you will, do what you will, do what you will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, oh my God, my God, my God. Go ahead, church. Find your little place of prayer. Hallelujah. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ah, oh my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. You want to stand up wherever you are. If you want to make your seat at all to this morning. If you want to come and stand in the altar space, or you want to bow your knees, my God, my God. If you want to stand up and face the walls, uh, we give you praise, we give you praise. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Oh God, we praise you this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, cry out to him. Make your requests be known unto him. Ah, we give you praise. We give you praise. Ah, my God, that's right. You're doing well, church. Lift up your voices. Call upon the God of heaven. Ah, we give you praise. Shandara, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Ah, you are the glory and you are the lifter up of our heads. Oh, my God, we come to you. We come to you. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You are God. You are the God of the impossible. The things that are impossible with men are possible with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, heal the sick this morning. Heal the sick. We send the word of healing. Those who are laid up in hospital, in the nursing home. Here in Trinidad or across the seas, Lord, we send the word of healing. Let the same power that raised Christ from the dead quicken their bodies. Ah, we give you praise. Bless every home. Bless every home. Every marriage. Oh, God, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Comfort the bereaved families. Those who are carrying grief this morning. Wherever there is any kind of brokenness, oh God. We speak your peace, oh God. Lord, we give you praise. Mm. 
Yes. We wait, Lord Jesus. We wait. They that wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my God, Spirit of the Living God, brood in this place, brood over this people, brood over this people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we have come into your house yes. to love you and to worship you, yes, to Lord, magnify Lord. your name, to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How we love to call the name of Jesus, yes. the name that is above every name. Every name. Hallelujah, Lord. We humble ourselves yes. in the presence of a holy God. And we say, Lord, come have your way in our lives this morning. And Father, this morning, Lord, as we pray, O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, that your word 
gives us the assurance of our sure faith that is in Christ Jesus, Lord. Lord, your word tells us, for other foundation can no man lay that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that our faith is upon the sure foundation of Christ, the living Son of the living God. Lord, you said in your word, O oh God, that if we put our trust in you, you will not put us to shame, Father. So, Father, this morning, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that we can stand upon the solid rock that is Jesus. Lord, when you ask the disciples, who do men say I am? Some say that you are a prophet. Some say that Elias. Lord, but Peter, Peter said, Thou art the Son. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, that revelation of truth came to him through the Father. And Lord, you said unto him, because of that revelation of that truth, O God, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, you said upon that revelation, you shall build your church, O God, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Father, we thank you this morning, O God, that your church is built upon the solid rock, that your church, O God, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for this ministry, this great ministry of faith center. This ministry has taught that truth, O oh God, from its very inception, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this ministry has been built upon the sure foundation of God's word. We just have to look at the lives of people and see where they were and where you have brought them from. So how we thank you, O oh God. How we thank you, O oh God, that you are our rock this morning. You are our cornerstone this morning. How we thank you that our lives can be built on the sure foundation of your word this morning. And Lord, you, you tell us, you told us in your word, O oh God, that we are to take heed how we build. Because there's coming a day when every man's work will be tested by fire. And only that which is built upon the solid rock, upon the foundation of knowing who Christ is to us, upon the revelation of your word. Once we built according to your word, our works will stand and there will be a sure reward for your people. So Father, this morning, Lord, touch your people, O God. Help us, Lord, as we continue to walk in obedience to your word. Help us, Lord, to build our lives upon the word of truth upon God's holy word, O oh God. Lord, many are building their lives and they are building based on their finances, based on their business, based on their success. But Lord, how we thank you, O oh God, that we have the truth, the truth of God's word, that who Christ is, he is who he said he is. He is the son of the living God. And that will last forever and for all eternity. So Father God, one more time, we ask you, O oh God, to help us to continue, O oh God, to build upon the sure foundation of your living word, of your truth. Because we know when we build according to your holy word, we know, O oh God, that when the storms come, when the fire rages, we will stand and we will be strong and we shall overcome. So, Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your word this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for the revelation of the truth. In Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father and our God, we just bow before you on this communion morning. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, your word says that we have been redeemed from the curse, Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you this morning on this communion morning. We can say, Lord, that you brought us back, Lord, with your love. Lord, you brought us back with your, with your blood, Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, you brought us back, Lord, because you have purpose for our lives. 
And Lord, the next verse as we pray this morning, you said the blessing of Abraham will come upon your people. And Lord, your promise to Abraham, O oh God, from the very first time he heard your voice was greatness. Lord, you have greatness in store for this church. Lord, you have greatness in store for Faith Center. Lord, you have greatness in store for every family this morning. And Lord, on this communion morning, we pray, Lord Jesus, that your church will hear your voice just as clear. Come out, that you can come into the greatness. Lord, you promised, Lord, that you would be our shield, Lord Jesus, and our exceeding great reward, Lord. Lord, you promised unto us, Lord, if we would just believe, oh God. And Lord, this morning, you said the spirit of faith can come upon your church. Lord, just as you said it in your word, Lord, we believe you today. Lord, we believe you for healing, oh God. The curse, Lord, of sickness can be removed, Lord Jesus. Lord, let there be healing this communion morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, for those believing, oh God, healing in our bodies, Lord, healing in our financials, Lord, healing in our homes, Lord Jesus, healing in our family relations, Lord, healing in marriages, oh God, healing today, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we come to the communion table, we believe today, oh God. Lord, as we bow before you in prayer, oh God. Lord, whatever people are asking, oh God, in prayer, Lord Jesus, Lord, you give the answer, Lord. Lord, one of your answers is wait, Lord. One of your answers is hold on. Lord, one of your answers today, oh God, is I will come through for you. Lord, as we come to the table in faith, Lord, we believe, Lord, Lord, that you're the prayer answering God today. And Lord, even while Abraham waited on the promised seed, oh God, Lord, you, as he waited, oh God, he could trust you, Lord. Lord, today, oh God, your church trusts you, Lord. Lord, we trust you with joy we trust you with peace lord jesus we trust you lord for your love to overflow and father we just give you glory today oh god as your church would continue to worship and continue in prayer we give you glory lord lord your promises where there's glory lord jesus when we give you the glory there will be peace Lord, let there be peace today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for your peace today. In your name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we continue to bless you in your house yes, today. Father, we magnify the name of our God. Yes. Father, we praise you tonight, eh, Father. Lord, we bless you. Father, we honor yes. you this yes. morning. Yes. Father, we are thankful to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Yes. Father, we are so grateful that the price that Jesus Christ paid to redeem us, Father, to save us, Lord, yes. that we can all receive everlasting life. Father, your word says, Father, as believers, Lord, we decree and declare according to your word, Father, that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to him who believes. Father, we believe in the resurrection power of the cross, Father. We believe, Lord, in the healing of the cross, Father. We believe that all that Jesus paid for, that we will experience it, my God. We are not ashamed. We are the light of this world, and we are the salt of this earth. Father, we can never deny it, Lord, because Jesus Jesus Christ died openly. He paid the full price yes. for every one of us, yes. to every believer, Father. And yes. we know, Lord, we know we're not for the cross. Where would we have been, Father? Where would our lives be, my Jesus? And we ask you today, Lord, that we will never be ashamed. We will stand and we will be strong and we will be bold and we will be the light of this world. We will be the witness in our neighborhood, in our workplace. We will represent Jesus. We will be all that he has called us to be, a vessel of honor, the decree and declare the wondrous works of our Lord and Savior. Father, we pray today, Father, to everyone that believes, to everyone that believes, all believers, Father, to be witnesses for the Lord. All believers, to never, Father, to declare, decline from representing Christ, to stand up and 
decree and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, we will be, Lord, like Daniel, Father. Yes. We will not defile ourselves with the things in this world. We will purpose in our hearts, my Father. We will never be ashamed, as the Gospel of Mark says, Lord, that if we are ashamed of him here on earth, he will be ashamed of us in heaven to his father lord i pray that today father yes. give us that boldness yes. give us that boldness to represent jesus give us that boldness to let everyone know there is a way out father and his name is jesus he gave his life that we could receive eternal life father we thank you and bless you this morning in jesus christ come to worship the Lord this morning. We shake up that spirit of heaven and put on the garment of grace. Lord, we worship you, we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say, alas, 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 and did my Savior bleed. Again, my sovereign died. Would he devote that sacred hand for such a man? Oh, sing and dance, oh, at the cost, at the cost, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there. the 
shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor the Mighty God the Prince of Peace as we lift our voices to exalt the Prince of Peace we sing praises to your name O Lord we sing praises O
anything right now anything could happen right now miracles can happen right now broken bodies can be healed right now hallelujah hallelujah prayers are being answered right now miracles are in motion right now the power of God is being released right now in the name of the Lord Jesus destroying the works of the devil dismantling and canceling every plan that the devil has against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ah, we give you praise, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for your awesome presence. We serve a living, risen Savior. Hallelujah, he is our midst today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, give the Lord a hand of praise. If you are happy you came to church this morning, you did the right thing. Don't get caught up. Don't get too caught up with what's happening right now. It's the Christmas season. We love Christmas, don't we? Yes, we do. But don't get too caught up. Put the kingdom first. Amen. Love Jesus more than you love anything else. And when you put him first, you know what the word says. All these things. All these things. So so nice to see all of you here this morning. Let me on behalf of the bishop, the first lady, our senior pastor, welcome you into the house of this, uh, the Lord on this lovely, lovely Sunday morning, this first Lord's Day of this 12th month of the year. Those of you who are joining us online or on WAC 91, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining with us. Well, before you sit down, why don't you give a, a little bounce, a little high five, a little good morning. Good to see you. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. 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 
the Lord, praise the Lord. On Tuesday of this week is a special day in the life of a special man. He's our bishop. He's our pastor. He's our father. He is everything to us. lives that have been changed because you gave to the Lord. 40 years ago, you could have walked away. When the rug was pulled from under you, you could have walked away, but you didn't. In the midst of all the bitterness, all the tears, you stayed the course. And look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. God bless you, First Lady. God bless you. God bless you for being there with the man of God to support him all these years. And we love you dearly. On Tuesday, he will celebrate his 52nd birthday. Does he look great for 82? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, Brother Rex, would you come, please? I have asked Brother Rex to make a present presentation to him on behalf of the church. Brother Raj, would you bring that gift? So would you come on the platform for a moment, please? Please remain in church. Please remain standing in church. He said to sit down. He said to sit down. Good morning, all. Pastor, you know, I decided to just put some notes because I might just go on and on. Your impact on my life has been because of the influence Jesus has had on yours. The preparation and the dedication to excellence over the years have been evidenced by the many anointed pastors, leaders, and people in the body of Christ the world over because you have influenced and you have impacted many lives. I know of people who will wait for your message on the morning to use as a template for inspiring their own messages. All that I am and I ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. You introduced me to Jesus and I'm sure that I speak on behalf of many. You didn't only introduce me, but you demonstrated God's love and God's kindness, his compassion and his power. You didn't give up, Pastor. You stayed the course. You stood the test of faith. You stood the test of time. My dear friends, effective leadership and teaching is instructing and influencing behavior. It is taking the responsibility to ensure that learning is taking place. It's just not a message. In James 3.1, James is saying in the NLT, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For he who teach will be judged more strictly. Pastor, you have taken this calling from God 
with a holy Christ-like passion. God bless you, sir. Like you taught us what you make happen to others, God will make happen to you. From all of us, happy, happy 82nd birthday. We love you. God bless you richly. Thing. I want to say you're a bad boy. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. As the man said, at my age, you're glad to be anywhere. What a thrill. What a joy. No words are adequate enough to express what my wife and I feel this morning to be with you and to be enjoying all of his goodness and all of his blessings and all of his presence. We can't uh, help but mention those of you who were with us 40 years ago for the birthing of this church. God is our witness that it was the furthest, furthest thing from our minds. We never had any ambition, any goal, any dream, any desire to give birth to a new church. We were very, very grateful for where we were. So the truth is, the absolute truth is, everything we see here this morning is the Lord's doing and marvelous in his eyes. So for those of you who have been with us in the beginning, and those of you who have stayed the course and for everything you have done and continue to do to make the church a strong, healthy, wonderful, loving, prayerful, faith center family that it is. From the very beginning to those who were baptized last Sunday, 56 of you and your families, and even if you're not a baptized member of this church, even if you are a visitor, whether today for the first time or any time, thank you for being here. Thank you for all that you do, especially your prayers. We try to be faithful to pray for you every day, several times a day. And I'm saying that because it's the truth. Every day, and several times a day, we try to be faithful to pray for you. And thank you for praying for us. I am touched every week, as I did this past week when I called one of the young men who just uh, became the pastor of his church right here in San Fernando. Uh, we heard about it when we were abroad. So when I came back, I called him to congratulate him and he reminded me it was 40 something years ago that the Lord used us to cast devils out of him and he's pastoring today right here in the city and I was very very blessed when he told me and I don't think you would say it without meaning it that every day they call my name in prayer I am so blessed. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all the expressions of your love towards not just me and my family. We're very grateful. But to this church and to this ministry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our senior pastor is in England this morning. He and his two boys have been in Europe for the last two weeks enjoying a vacation. He'll be with us next Sunday morning, God willing. Thank you for the support you've given him. John Mark and Caroline and Micah and Ashley and Ethan. Thank you 
thank you, thank you. My wife and I love you, appreciate you more than we can say. And thank you for honoring us again today on my birthday. Thank you and God bless you. Let me invite you to stand as we sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bishop. Happy birthday to you. Be the good Lord. God bless you, church. You may be seated. Can we have the announcements, please? Let the ushers come at this time. Welcome, Faith Center family. Sunday school is for children ages 3 to 15 years. The Monday night war room and the Wednesday morning prayer meetings will resume in 2024. Wednesday is the official day of fasting for the whole church. Telios Young Adults Ministry promises a night to remember at their Christmas dinner on Sunday, 17th December at 6.30 p.m. Tickets cost $250. For more details, please visit Faith Center Telios on Facebook. Dudemis Student Ministry invites all teenagers on December 8th for their annual Christmas dinner. Tickets are $50 and will be available in the lobby. Christmas by the Book is a musical drama for the whole family presented by our Sunday School on Friday, 15th December at 7 p.m. Baby Dedication is Sunday 17th at 8.30 a.m. and Tuesday 19th at 6 p.m. Forms are available from the church office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Join us on Christmas Day at 8.30 a.m and All Year's Night Service at 7 p.m. Couples requesting to be married in 2024 are required to notify the church six months before the wedding date for planning and counseling. Please call 65 Bible and speak to Reverend Angus Ramjohn. God bless you richly. Amen. Thank you so very much. Uh, finally, Telios, they're having a snack box sale after church for $25. And this is to help them all set their Christmas dinner expenses. So please give them the support as you leave the church this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hold what you brought in your hands. Hallelujah. Everybody give him thanks. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, the psalmist said, I will lift up. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? All, all of my help comes from me. Lord, you are our source. You are our God. You are our protector. You are our provider. You are the one who supplies all our needs. Lord, we thank you for our jobs. Lord, we thank you for our businesses. Lord, we thank you for our places of income. Oh, God, Lord, we thank you for the favor of God that is upon your people. Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless them and prosper them. You continue to open doors and to make ways for them where there seem to be no way. Those who are seeking employment, Lord, provide jobs. Those who are employed, favor them and prosper them on their jobs. Lord, those who have businesses, send the contracts. Send the customers, send the clients. Lord, I call the spirit of prosperity and favor and good success and increase and enlargement upon your people. Lord, all because of this act of obedience. If we be willing and obedient, you said, you cannot lie. We shall eat the good of the land. Thank you, Father. Receive it with love this morning. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to partner with you the preaching of the gospel to the nations of the world that souls might be saved 
In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, As we celebrate this morning, um, we are doing this song in remembrance of the sacrifice that Christ made. So I hope everyone enjoys. Thank you. Brother Emil and choir, we thank you for your ministry this morning. I know it's time for God's word. It's my joy to introduce my friend, colleague, and fellow minister, Reverend Russell Elvin, to bring God's word this morning. Blessed morning to, to everyone, to the bishop, and to the first lady, or spiritual parents. I want to thank you so again for this opportunity this morning to stand in this fearful, holy desk of trembling, so to speak, 
but it's, it's a pleasure to really standing here and to, to share, you know, with our people this morning what God has laid upon my heart. I uh, want to say a special good morning also to the First Lady. I want to thank uh, both of you for the investments that you have made and will continue to make in this church and you have made in my life. I met the bishop maybe about 33 years ago for the first time. And from that first day I met with the man of God, my life has not been the same. You know, God has just started a work that I never expected. Uh, truly in my wildest dreams, I think the last place I expect to see myself would have been in a pulpit. You know, I like cricket, so I said, well, maybe to play for the West Indies, but that didn't come true. I reached at least to pray for Trinidad. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but, but God always has the best plan. You know, we never know where God is leading us. All we have to do is start following. You know, start following, you know. So we have to follow. He's the one in the making. So I want to thank God again for the opportunity, Reverend John Mark, in his absence. And so let me take this time on behalf of my family and myself to wish you a happy birthday on Tuesday. Uh, I know you have afforded me an off day on Tuesday. <laughs> so, so I want to convey <laughs> ahead of time, I trust God that you're going to have the most wonderful time. The blessings of the Lord will be upon you, continue to be upon you, and your life will always be blessed until heaven ready to take you home. I want to thank God for this opportunity this morning to share His Word. And uh, we live in a, in a really, really difficult time. You know, things are getting tougher and tougher and harder every single day. So we live in a time of moral and economical and social decline. This is the, 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 the temperature in which we live. It's, and it's getting worse by the day. Things are not what it used to be. Life is losing its morals. Life is losing its principles that it was built upon. Just look around us. And we could see what this life is offering. There are little or no absolutes in lives, in this life anymore. You know, the world has really, really, really changed. Things has been happening to the world, things has been happening to the church. And as a result, all of us, the society, by large, has been changing and changing so rapidly. Today we are facing problems in our world because the systems of this world, the foundations of this world are being destroyed. And that is why today, there is so much chaos and trouble. You see, the foundation was the things upon which this world was set upon. In fact, God says that, he, that, that the world has a foundation. Before the foundation of the world was, God was here already. So there is a foundation upon which this world exists. But then man came in, and, and when men came, men began to set up their own foundation. Just like we are accustomed to, every year you're going to find some new foundation is being born. So when men set foundations, we know what's going to happen. Because when men set their foundation, they set their foundation in self. It is not anchored. Most foundations are not of this world are not anchored in the things of God. And as a result today, Foundations are being broken. Psalms chapter 11, if we were going to read the first uh, three verses of the psalm. This is a psalm of David, and hear what David says. He says, in the Lord put I my trust. How say you to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, and they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. But this is the verse. He says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 
And I want to talk to you on that subject this morning. If the foundations are destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Well, then we have to know who God is talking to. He's talking to us. We are the righteous. We are the ones that are living in this moral and this economical decay. And if these foundations are being broken down, it affects all of us. What shall we do? This was David running away from King Saul. David was anointed to be the next king of Israel. And we know there was a great fight because David has just conquered the great Goliath. And after he has done that, they were rejoicing and the people were singing in the streets that Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousand. And as a result, it bruised Saul's ego. And as a result, he started hunting David like a wild animal to kill him. David had to run for his life. There were times David could have took his life. But David said, no, 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 I shall not touch the Lord's anointed. He respected the man so much. So when David penned this psalm, it was a reflection of what King Saul was, was trying to do to him. And not only to him. Because David knew already that God had called him to be the next king. To build the next kingdom. And you know if Saul were to destroy him, David, he was going to destroy really the kingdom of God that were to come. And he says, if the kingdoms be destroyed, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Well, every time we think about foundation, we think about building. It is one of the easiest things to our mind that speaks of a foundation. Well, what then is really a foundation? The foundation is a load-bearing part of the structure in the natural. This morning, we are, stand, we are seated in this beautiful building, but we are seated on a foundation that you cannot see. But I have seen it. I have been here from the foundation of this building. And I know there are hundreds of piles that went 40 feet into the ground. There are pile caps that were put up on those piles. Some of them went up to be 4 feet by 8 feet by 3 feet thick. That is the kind of foundation that we are on. In fact, what we are on, we could house two buildings the same size on top of this building. The kind of foundation that we have set. So the foundation is a load-bearing part of the structure. It anchors and it holds in place the things you're building. The integrity of the foundation, it determines the load-bearing capacity for the structure. That is how important the foundation is. If the foundation is not good, the building is going to fall. Well, if it don't fall, you're going to see cracks. You're going to be repairing that building all the days of your life. But then there is a spiritual side. Like, like believers, we too must be building a foundation. And our foundation is not with stone and bricks and steel. Our foundation is a spiritual, excuse me, it's a spiritual foundation. And that foundation is based on values that has come out from God's word. And that is what we are called to build upon this morning. Upon the values of God's word. But how many of our foundations in this life are being destroyed? Let us look at some of them briefly. Today, let's start looking at the governmental or the legislative foundation. Government and law. We have a lot of problems all over the world. Governments are being changed like clothes. Today, our government is elected to marry you out. And, and all these things are weakens the foundation of good governance. The politicians. 
They are having a field day. All kinds of crazy stuff they are, uh, are being done by some of them. They have gained unpopularity over the years. And as a result, we don't take on the politicians anymore. And as a result, it keeps breaking that kind of foundation that's supposed to be set for the nations. What about laws? There are all kinds of laws. But how many laws are being amended today? Every other week, a law in the court is being amended because we want to suit a law to, to help some little fraction, to help some little trade, trade somewhere in the, in, the, in the nation. We do all kinds of things just to ensure that these laws are passed. What about the bad decisions that are made by the governments? Tons of them. Right here in Trinidad, we have legalized weed. I think that is really crazy. I live in the Princess Town area. I see eight young men and I'm sure they're under 25. And I don't know what they're taking up from the ground. But that's what it is. That is what it is. When we legalize these things, we give everybody the opportunity to hold on to it. Where there is no law, there is chaos. So bad decisions. Some nations of the world, they have made decisions to make abortion law. All you have to do is to walk with your money and walk in the abortion shop. Child sex, and the list could go on and on and on. The reason why that is happening is because the foundations are being destroyed. What about the economical, the economic financial foundation? We can look right home. This country is loaded with money. The banks make their call every year. How many hundreds of millions of dollars in profit? But still... Money is a problem everywhere. Crime has become one of the most lucrative business in the world. Long time we used to say crime doesn't pay. Wish up today we could say crime pays. Because they're making plenty of money. The moral money laundering scams. The human trafficking trade, the pedophile rings, the gangs, the guns, the drugs. All these has come into the world and they are really breaking down the foundation of nations. What about the social and the moral foundation? The family and society. Look how much humanitarian problems we're having. You pass by the warden's office and long line. Everybody looking for a freebie. The breakdown in family life. Today, families, some families are only staying together maybe because of some business deal. The family is being taunted day by day. We are living in homes that are unhappy. There, there are so many problems, so many stresses. Remember in the past, we had no cars. We could remember when we had no cars. We had no concrete houses. We had no in-house toilets. We had little or no money. We had little or no education. But family life was good. Now we have all these things, and the reason why these things are happening is because the foundations are being destroyed. There is a breakdown in communication. We're talking about social life. Social media has taken over. You have friends you never met. Can you imagine that? We are friends. We have never met them, but we are friends. We have friends. 
We speak without using our voices. Our voices are now replaced by some words that we put into a little message. People are becoming their own idols. They live for selfies. They live for views. They live for comments and for likes. This is what the life is. And as a result, they have won more people to follow them, Reverend Peter, than they have won to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where the world is. And we are, believers are walking in this kind of dimension. We have more people following us on our page. Check my page out. How many views and how many likes? But how many people have you won to follow the Lord? The foundations are being destroyed. What about education? Long time we are afraid of teachers. They only call your name. Yes, sir, yes, miss. Yes, sir, yes, miss. We are afraid we don't know what for. You only hear your name. Today, the, teacher, the children are sizing up the teachers. The bags that are supposed to carry your books are now carrying guns, are now carrying knives and cutlasses and weapons to do bodily harm. What about the children? Who are born straight boys and straight girls. Today they are being taught in school. That you don't have to worry how you were born. Or with what gender you were born. You could wait until you get a certain age. And you could choose. And the reason why these things are happening. Is because the foundations are being destroyed. What about the church? The church foundation is shaken. It cannot be destroyed. We're going to see Jesus saying that in the scripture. It cannot be destroyed. But the church foundation is shaken. Why? Because we are affected by all the things that happen around about us. The gospel seems no longer to be the good news. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, WhatsApp seems to be the order of the day. They are more read than the Bible. Think about it. They are more read than the Bible. The foundations are being destroyed. Church services are falling away now from the pews and it comes on a little device. That you could have in the comfort of your home. Where you don't have to make any sacrifice to worship God. We have to guard ourselves, church. No wonder David is saying, if the foundations of the Lord, is, uh, if the foundations are destroyed. He's asking the question, what will us the righteous do? Would we be destroyed with it? God help us. The Lord needs to help us. When we stop preach about hell, and when sin stop being the church number one enemy, come on, you know there are some people preaching that out there, they don't preach hell. And they try not to preach sin to make people feel guilty. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm grateful for faith center. Heaven gates and hell flames. We're going to do it next year again. And if God is going to use that to scare the hell out of people, so be it. We have to stand for something or we're going to fall for anything. So why are the foundations being destroyed? The Bible says... The whole world lies in wickedness in the evil one. That is why. That is why the whole world lies in the evil one. So there is a spirit that is out there. And that spirit is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
But hear what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. He says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and hear what he's saying, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You miss a good time to say amen or to celebrate. Amidst all that we are seeing happening in the world, Jesus says, listen, my church that I am going to build, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. The church will be shaken. The church will never be destroyed. Jesus is going to return and all the foundations that we talk about is going to fall. But the only foundation that is going to stand is going to be the church. So you're in the right place. You are in the right time, but we have to be doing the right thing also. And the rock he's talking about is not concrete. Or a piece of land somewhere. It is talking about a revelation of who Jesus is. The, the, the whole conversation and in, that leads up to Matthew 16, 18. Jesus was asking the disciples, he said, who do men say I am? Well, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are a prophet. He said, but Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, upon this rock. Upon that truth, upon that revelation, Peter, that is how this church is going to be built. My church will be built. And he says the gates of hell will never, ever, ever prevail against it. Amen. So if the foundations are being destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Let us turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let me share quickly because my time is running out. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading from the 10th verse. It says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Here's the word again. I have laid the foundation and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than, than that which is laid, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed or tried it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man work abide, which he had built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by the fire. Let me share a couple of things quickly with you as to, as to what shall the righteous do. If we go back to Psalms 11, David said, I put my trust in the Lord. I put my trust. Build on the element of faith in God. Trust. The, those who were advising him were saying to him, David, it is better you run to your hiding place, run to your mountain and take cover because the bow is already drawn against you. I could imagine David stood up and he's looking at them because after you conquered Goliath, then what? Come on, man, you have some dust just beat off your shoulders. He said, where am I running to? When I could put my trust in the Lord. So we're going to start building by putting your trust in something. Some people are building, but their trust is in their finances. Some people are building and their trust is in their education. Put your trust in God. So number one, build on the element of trust or faith. 
Secondly, you're going to build upon the sure foundation. That is what we just read in verse 10 and 11. God has given to us grace. And that grace he has given to us, according to Paul's writing to the church in Corinth, he says for us to be wise master builder. God could have said, listen, I'm giving you the grace to be a builder. Oh, I have given you the grace to be a master builder. God said, no, I'm giving you the grace to be a wise master builder. Every one of us. Maybe this morning you have never built a box for a chicken to lay eggs in. But God is saying to you, you are a wise master builder. It's either you receive God's word or you reject his word. So get ready to build. Get ready to take up your building tools and build according to what God wants you to build. Build on the, on the sure foundation. So he has given to you his grace and his favor. The foundation has already been laid. The, 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 the word of God says, Paul was saying to the Corinthian church, I have laid the foundation. He was the forerunner. He was the man carrying the gospel. But what was the foundation he laid? Christ Jesus. He laid Jesus wherever he went. He preached Jesus and him crucified. He said, but upon this foundation, he said, I have laid the foundation and another could build their own. So the foundation is already laid. Jesus is the sure foundation. Now we are to build upon Jesus. Build upon his word. Build upon what he has said to us, what he's saying to us at this time. That is how we build. That is how we're going to be wise. We have to listen to him. And then whatever he says, we have to do it. So he says another is going to build upon it. But what are you building this morning? We are building a life. We are building a family. We are building career. We are building business. But whatever you are building, if the building is not on Christ, it will not prosper. It may appear to be something. Some of you might be tempted to say, well, 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 preacher, I have seen people who are not Christians and they have established and they are going guns and they have a whole lot of stuff going for them. Psalms 37, verse 35 to 37. Hear what it says. Jesus says, or the word of God, I have seen the wicked and the wicked is not the person who doing all kind of bad things. The wicked is the unsaved. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a great bay tree. Next verse. Yet he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. Who is the upright? We are the upright, God's people. For the end of that upright man is peace. So you keep the little you have and stop looking at all that you're seeing outside there because all that you're seeing outside is going to come to naught. The Bible says, according to the book of Revelation, in one hour. This leads me to my next point. Build according to pattern. We build this building according to pattern. And everything was so strict. If you have to change one detail, tongue and country planning. You have to go back to the architect, the man who drew the plans. You have, you have to all the details. It costs you time. It costs you resources. And same thing, when we are building, if we are not building according to pattern, it's going to cost us time. And it's going to cost us resources. Because you're going to build something, only realize you build the wrong thing, and then you have to break it down to build it over. So is with our spiritual life. Sometimes we feel we're building our spiritual life. And we feel we're building it right. 
But sometimes when we catch ourselves, we realize we were building up some areas wrong. Well, you can't continue in the wrongdoing. You have to undo that. So you could do it God's way. Follow the pattern of God's word. God's word is the blueprint and it tells us what to do. It is our step-by-step guide. The do it yourself, but you don't have to do it yourself. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. So as you follow the word of God, as you follow the plan of God, God is going to help you build and God is going to help you to build. Hallelujah. 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 Paul also gave a warning when he was building. While he was building the foundation, he gives a a warning. He said, take heed how you build. It's not everything we feel we're building in the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. Sometimes we're building and we're building with the wrong motives. I am only doing this because I want to get so close so I could scratch Reverend Angus's back because he could do something for me. Wrong motive. I am really going because I know so, 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 and he know persons in high circles. So if I get close to that person by my little doings, he will be able to pull a little string for me. Wrong motive. So the word of God warns us. Let every man take heed how we build it thereupon. Number four, build using the right materials. That is very important. Whatever you're building, make sure you use the right materials. Here in the scripture, the apostle Paul is helping us. He said, no other... Now if any man build, verse 12, upon this foundation, he's talking about Christ, and he's talking about gold and silver and precious stones, would he stubble? What is he talking about? Two different kinds of materials. Gold, silver, and precious stones are very durable. They are very costly. They are harder to work with. But when they finish, they're going to bring a lot of value to what you're building. What about the hay and the wood and the stubble? Those are the things we, we throw out. When you know what you know, it's stubble we take out from this building. All pieces of wood with nails and all kinds. We had to carry it out to burn it somewhere. So wood, hay, and stubble, uh, wood could be very, very cheap. It is not as durable. It will not last. It will not stand the test of time. But what do we build our spiritual life? We build in prayer. We build with the word of God. We build on God's foundation when we fast and pray. We build when we give ourselves into service to God and to man. All these are ways of us building on that foundation. What are you building with? What are you building with? Don't only build something that looks beautiful. But the end of the life, it's empty and vain. Build using the right materials. Build using sacrifice. Build so as your, whatever you're building is going to be tested. Go on and go give us a free walk down the park. No, 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 no. It's like test. Now it's test time. Last three months, everybody in school, and we're doing all kinds of things and playing the fool. All of a sudden, it's just a test time. All the teacher wants to know is how much you already learned during this term. I just give you a little, I want to ask, I, I assess you to see where you are at this point in time. A test is going to come. Whatever you're building, get ready to have that tested. In the kingdom, yes, it's going to be tested. I told you in the, in, in, earlier on that the church will be shaken. Whatever you're building will be shaken. You're building a ministry, get ready, that ministry will be tested. You're building a life, that is going to, going to be tested. A marriage, whatever it is. The test of time is going to come to your life. Matthew chapter 7. 
verse 24 to 27, Jesus talk about building. He said, one man build a house upon the rock. He says, the wind blow, the rain comes, the flood came, but the house on the rock stood. It was tested. The elements of this life tested it. The wind tested it from around. The rain tested it from atop. The floods tested it from below. But the house that was built upon the rock, that house stood. Compare that with another house. Same materials, same dimensions, same everything, but built on the sand. The same element that touched the house on the rock will touch the house on the sand. When a storm is coming to your country, you don't tell some people move like we're moving people down the Gaza Strip. Go down south because I'm blowing through the north. That storm comes and it mashes up everything. The house on the sun, the Bible says, fell and great was the fall of it. So we have to know where we're building. Build something that is going to last. The only thing that's going to last in this life are the spiritual things. Our prayers, the Bible says, it goes up in heaven and is bottled up. The spiritual things will last. God forbid. But if the world come to an end right now, you know how many unhappy people am I might have in heaven? Look how much money I leave in the bank. I'm in Trinidad. <laughs> I'll be crying. And you had a time to spend it. But we like one million, two million, one hundred million. And oh, it's, it's counting. And we're enjoying good life. But God has given us all these things richly to enjoy, my friends. Enjoy it while you have it. Because when we leave this earth, Solomon says, we don't know who's coming after us. And just blow it up in smoke. So build so as to be tested. And lastly, you build for rewards. That is the God we serve. He's a just God. He's a loving God. He's the kind of God who will not have us working, working, working without blessing. Once your work lasts, you will be rewarded. God wants to reward every single believer my time is up my time is up my time is up you have heard maybe for the last 40 minutes there about shouting in your ears god forgive me if i was loud in your ears but that's just my personality i can't help myself that is how god has designed me to be everybody different but you have heard what the Holy Spirit have had me to say this morning about foundation. And the foundations of this world, they are all broken. The only one foundation that is going to stand is God Church. Maybe some of you are here this morning in church, you're online. And you know what? You are not yet standing or start building upon this true foundation which is Jesus Christ and this is where you begin my friends this is where you begin it's an act of faith it is you asking Jesus to come into your heart into your life it is you surrendering yourself to him and making him your Lord and from that moment onward you start following the blueprint of the scriptures and building your life upon the true foundation this morning i give you an opportunity to respond you're not saved you're not saved you like what the, we read in the scripture the bible calls you the wicked not me the bible says that god wants you to change that he wants you to move from being wicked to being righteous all you have to do is to surrender your life to him. Maybe this morning you're a backslider. You started walking on the foundation. But then all of a sudden you start building with some contrary materials. 
God is arresting your heart this morning. Put down the wood, the hay and straw. Strive for the gold. Strive for the silver. Strive for the precious stones. He wants to change your life. Would you allow him to? In this season, when everything is broken, the only thing that is going to stand will be his church. If you're not saved this morning, and you want to come to that place where you could anchor your life on the sure foundation, I want you to open your heart and to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's anybody like that this morning, all I want you to do is just lift your hand right where you are. We want to pray with you. We want to meet you. We want to talk. We want to encourage you. But first step, first step in getting into your building is getting to know the builder of all builders. His name is Jesus. Anybody want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ this morning as your Lord, as your personal Savior? This is nothing to be afraid about, nothing to be ashamed about. This is the, one of probably the most important decision you will ever make with your life. Because this decision leads you into that eternity with God. Nobody in the balconies. As we get ready now to close the net because we're going to have Holy Communion. I trust that all of you are saved. Anybody down here in the sanctuary area? I'm seeing somebody pointing. I'm seeing one hand to my left. Anybody else? Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. This is the most important moment in the whole service. This is your eternity is involved at this point in time. So we thank God for you. And like we are accustomed doing in the services now, at the end of the service, I want you to come right down front and meet with me so that I could lead you in this prayer. I could talk to you. I could encourage you. And if there are anybody else within the service, and you did not lift your hand, but you want to come, you too will be welcome to come and make that decision and seal that deal, Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Let me just bless you and hand over to Reverend Angus. Father, we thank you this morning for being in your presence, being in your house. Lord, the word of God says that the angels in heaven rejoices even when one soul is saved. We thank you for this brotherhood of lifted his hand today. My God, we thank you, O oh God, for this church, your body of Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have recognized that, that we live in a broken world. We live, O oh God, in a world that is soon coming to nothing. Lord, the only thing in this life that is going to stand is the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. Today I pray for his church, his bride. He's going to come one of these days to take us. But when he comes, he wants to find us well built. Like he said in his word, we must be building upon the sure foundation. We must be building according to pattern. We must be building using the right materials. And even during our building, our homes must be, whatever we building must be able to stand the test of time. And Lord, we know you are a reward of them who will diligently seek you. I bless these your people today. Thank you for them. Thank you for them being in the house of God today. Bless them with your peace and bless them with your joy. In Jesus name, we ask with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you. Good morning. Thank you so very much Reverend Russ. Thank God for that word. The pure unadulterated word of the living God the foundation upon which this church and our lives have been built may God continue to bless you and raise you up to be a mighty mighty man of God in his house thank you Lord communion servers would you join me at the table rich so I'll cherish the old rugged Bye.
God's Word, Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 11, before we partake of Holy Communion. Wherefore, let's read the Word of God. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands next verse that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise and having no hope and without God in the world next verse we're going down to 19 but now in Christ Jesus you who sometimes were far off have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. For he is our peace, who hath broke who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were near. For though, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Anybody grateful to God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the work of the cross. Lord, we thank you for the work of the cross. Like we heard this morning, other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the foundation upon which our faith is built. Lord. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that we will all walk before you all the days of our lives. In spite of all that is being said, in spite of the many voices that are everywhere, Lord, we pray, Father, that we listen to your voice. Because your voice, your word, is the sure foundation. It is the only thing that will be able to withstand the time that we are living in. Father, we thank you for the cross. Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the price that you are willing to pay. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless these emblems today. Lord, bless the wafer that represents your body that was broken for us. Father, bless the poured out grape juice which represents your precious blood was spilled for us. My God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless the people as they will receive. Bless the people as they will eat and they will drink. Bless the servers as they will serve the people. Father, in the name of the Lord, you said, as often as we eat and as we drink, we are to do it in remembrance of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayer in your precious name. And everybody say, you don't have to be a member of Faith Center to partake, but you must be born again. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, Rich, you take it. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross 
Did we miss anybody? Anywhere? I see. Great job, guys. Come. Fort was on that old cross. Jesus suffered and died to pardon and you did, Lord. 
Thank you for redeeming our lives of destruction. Thank you for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and take off the first peel. Hold the wafer in your hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift it before him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come, Minister Kevin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Father, we thank you this morning again, Lord, for your wonderful gift towards us. We thank you for making your son Jesus sin for us this morning. We give you praise, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for agreeing to the transaction. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we are the righteousness of God this morning because of what you did. Lord, we give you praise, Lord. Lord, we, we can't even get it out of our minds. and We can't even fathom the thought, Lord, that God came to earth to redeem man. Lord, thank you for wanting to have a relationship with sinful man, Lord. Thank you, Father, for not abandoning us, Lord, for not rejecting us, Lord Jesus. We deserved all that. But we thank you for your grace this morning, Lord, and we give you praise, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to partake in Holy Communion. Thank you for saving our lives, Lord, and bringing us into a relationship with you. And Lord, as we do this, Lord, we remember you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, O God. We remember, Lord, that the price has been paid, Lord. And Lord, we can be free, Lord. We can be free. We can walk in victory. Lord, uh, we should not walk in any bondage, Lord Jesus. Thank you for freedom from all kinds of bondages, Lord. All the works of, the da of darkness, all the works of Satan. Thank you for delivering us this morning, Lord. And Lord, as we partake of this biscuit, this, this, this wafer, this represents your body. We remember that this morning. We leave this house, oh God, this morning, Lord, with renewed faith, oh God, and confidence in you, Lord, that we are free. We are free, we are free. So we give you praise and we give you thanks. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead and eat all of it in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Which can we seek? There is a fountain. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. thank you for the emblem that we hold in our hand this morning that represents the precious blood of Jesus and Lord we remember your word when under the old covenant the blood was sprinkled that blood broke the back of the devil that blood brought liberty to your people and your word says you brought them out with silver and gold and there was not one sick among them. And Lord Jesus, we thank you. When you instituted the Lord's Supper, you said, this is the new covenant in my blood. 
We thank you that that covenant is now in force, Lord. It's an everlasting covenant. It's a covenant based upon better promises than the old one. And Lord, even as by faith, your word says every time we take communion, we proclaim again the Lord's death. We confess it again, Lord. We confess the victory of the cross. We confess that the devil is defeated. We confess, Lord, that your people have been redeemed and liberated. We confess that the curse is now broken and destroyed. And Lord, as we drink by faith this emblem, we declare that the life of Jesus will now be released into every life, driving out death in any form, driving out sickness of every kind, canceling every curse, Lord, that tries to lodge itself in the lives of your people. And by faith, Lord, we receive all that Jesus purchased with his precious blood to be manifested in every life. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Drink all of it in his name. Well, if you are grateful to God this morning that you're in the house of the Lord, in the land of the living, let me invite you to stand up on your feet. Rich every praise. Hallelujah. Every prayer is to our God. Every word of worship yes. with one accord. Every praise. happy to be in the house of the Lord, give him a hand of praise. If you are thankful for the word of God, let's tell Reverend Russell, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If we are thankful for the man of God, we bless the man of God. Enjoy your birthday on Tuesday. Ah, we give you praise, we give you praise. And now, may the Lord, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his wonderful peace. That peace that passes all understanding. That peace that keeps heart and mind. My God, we thank you that this is going to be a great week. Lord, we declare it in the name of the Lord that this is going to be a great week. Yes, Lord. The favor of God is going to be upon your people. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow will abound in every area of their lives. That their going out is going to be blessed. Their coming in is going to be blessed. They're going to be blessed in the city and in the field. They're going to be blessed in every area of their lives. Because it is written in your word, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless us. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the morning and a wonderful afternoon. In Jesus' name, have a great week. Thank you, Lord. Every praise is to our God.